Hello, viewers. So welcome to our lecture on the kingdom animalia. Earlier, we have looked at the different characteristics of the animals. Now, we want to look at the classification of animals. In this video, we'll look at the criteria for the classification of animals. We'll look at the criteria for the classification of animals. Now, classification of animal kingdom is based on various fundamental features. And these fundamental features are one, the level of organization, the symmetry, the triploblastic, diploblastic, and triploblastic organization, and celium development, segmentation of the body, and the sixth one, present or absence of notochord. So these are the uh, various fundamental features that are used to classify animals into various groups. Their level of organization, the symmetry, the, whether they are diploblastic or triploblastic, then whether they have a celium or not, then segmentation of the body, whether they're segmented or not, then the presence or absence of notochord. Now I want to look at the first uh, distinctive feature, the first feature that's used for classification of animals, that's level of organization. So all members of the kingdom animalia are multicellular. All of them do not exhibit the same pattern of organization of cells. As a result, they have been classified into different levels of organizations. They are, the levels of organizations are cellular level of organization, tissue level of organization, organ level of organization, and the organ system level of organization. I want to look at the cellular level of the organization. In sponges, the cells are arranged as loose cell aggregates. They exhibit cellular level of organization. Cellular, cellular level of, of organization is exhibited by the sponges in which the cells are arranged as loose aggregates. They do not form uh, uh, some kind of relationship. They are not related in any way in their activities. They do not come together to carry out specific functions. Okay, so each cell is independent, carrying out its own activities. Such organisms are said to exist in the cellular level of organization. Then the next uh, level of organization is the tissue level of organization, and that occurs in the cylindrates or the vitreates. They, they are they arranged the in cylindrates. The arrangement of cells is more complex. Here. The cells are forming the same function are arranged into tissues. Hence, it's called tissue level of organization. So the Nidarians exhibits tissue level of organization. The cells are forming the same function are arranged into tissues. When the little cells that are performing the same function are grouped together on tissues and such organisms that have such groups of cells are set to exhibit in the tissue to exist the tissue level of organization. We also have the organ level of organization. A, a still higher level of organization, that is the organ level of the organization is exhibited by members of platyhelminthes and other higher phyla where tissues are grouped together to form organs each specialized for a particular function. So the, the platyhelminthes and other organisms exhibit uh, some kind of trace in which tissues come together to carry out specific functions. And such organisms are said to be in the organ level of organization. They also have the organ system level of organization in animals like the like annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms, semicordates, and cordates, organs have associated to form functional systems. Each system concerned with a specific physiological function. This pattern is called organ system of organization. Organ system of organization. So the organ system level of organization is uh, common to, to the analytes, the arthropods, the molluscs, the kinoderms, 
and the hemicodes and the cordes, in which organs have associated to form functional systems. And that is called the organ system level of organization, the organ system level of organization. I want to look at uh, the symmetry, which is also another feature that's used for the classification of organisms. Organisms can exhibit, can either be asymmetrical, in which they are not, a, uh, they, they cannot be caught into any identical, two identical halves. Then they, are, they can be radially symmetrical, in which they are able, they, are, can, be, they can be caught in any plane to form two identical halves. And such organisms are said to belong to a group of animals that are called radiata. Radiata. Then we have the bilateria that are bilaterally symmetrical, that you can cut into two identical halves, two mirror images. But in this case, that you can cut from, in the case of radiata, you can be cut in any plane to produce mirror images. Then the, uh, the asymmetrical organisms like the sponges do not have any, you cannot cut them into any identical half. For instance, if you cut this one into two like this, you cannot get two halves that are similar, that look alike. So I want to look at another feature, which is diploblastic and triploblastic organization. Organisms can either be diploblastic or triploblastic. Diploblastic organisms have two germ layers. They have the endoderm and the ectoderm only. They have endoderm and endoderm, but they have a non-living part that's called a mesoderm. layer. Then the triploblastic organisms have three body layers. They have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Such organisms are said to be triploblastic. So the diploblastic and triploblastic nature it's also used, it's also a criterion for the classification of animals. Then we also look at the fact that um, animals that have coelom and bones that, that do not have coelom is uh, also, it's very important in classification. Presence or absence of cavity between the body wall and the guild wall is very important in classification. The body cavity, which is lined by mesoderm, is called coelom. The body cavity that is lined by coelom is called the coelom. Based on body cavity, animals have been classified into a coelomates, pseudocoelomates, and coelomates. Animals have been classified into three categories the acoelomates that do not have body cavity, the pseudocoelomates that have false body cavity, and the coelomates that have a true body cavity. They have been classified into these groups. Acoelomates. The animals in which the body cavity is absent are called acelomates. And typical examples are the flat helminthes. Obviously, the flat ones in the phylum of flat helminthes are acelomates. They do not have a body cavity. Then the pseudocelomates. In some animals, the body cavity is not lined by mesoderm. Instead, the mesoderm is present as scattered parts in between the ectoderm and the endoderm. Okay, they do not have. The, the body cavity is not lined by a mesoderm. Such a body cavity is called pseudocelum, and the animals possessing them are called pseudocelomates. Pseudocelomates include nematodes, uh, that's ash helminthes, and rotifers. Okay, pseudocelomates include nematodes and rotifers. They have a false body cavity, so to speak. Now, the pseudocelomates. Animals possessing coelom are called coelomates. Okay, those organisms that possess the body cavity are said to be coelomates. Coelomates include annelids, mollusks, arthropods, echinoderms, hemicordates, and cordates. Organisms in the phylum annelida, the phylum mollusca, the phylum arthropoda, the phylum echinodermata, the phylum hemicordata, and the phylum cordata are said to be coelomates. They have body cavity in which the viscera stays, the viscera lies. Now, this is a picture, a figure that's showing the difference between acelomates, pseudocelomates, and coelomates. Now, these acelomates do not have a body cavity. They lack body cavity. The pseudocelomates have a false body cavity. This is a pseudocelum, while the coelom is the true body cavity. The coelom 
is a true body cavity. A cilia is a true body cavity. Now, segmentation is another feature for classification. Segmentation. In some animals, the body is externally and internally divided into segments with stereo repetition of uh, at least some segments. For example, in earthworms, millipedes, centipedes, and insects, the body shows this repeated, uh, this pattern called metameric segmentation. And the phenomenon is known as metamerism. So the fact that an organism is segmented or not is also another feature for classification. Now, this uh, features uh, features of uh, segmented organisms like the earthworms, the uh, millipedes, and some other arthropods. I want to look at uh, the another feature for the classification of the animals, which is the possession of notochord, the presence or absence of notochord. Notochord is a mesodermally derived rod-like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals. Chordates belong to the phylum chordata, while the non chordates are classified into the phyla prolifera, nematoda, archaeometes, rotifera, analida, mollusca, atropoda, echinodermata, hemicoda, and many others. So the possession of this mesodermally derived rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during embryonic development in some animals, known as notochord, is a distinctive feature. It's a feature that's used to classify these organisms. They are classified into non chordates and chordates. They are classified into non chordates and chordates. Now, the chordates are the organisms of the phylum chordata, while the non chordates belong to rotifera, nematoda, flat hermitids, and many others, many other phyla. I want to look at uh, another feature, which is uh, uh, the sub kingdoms and the kingdom, and I want to look at various sub kingdoms, the kingdom animalia. We have two sub kingdoms in the kingdom animalia. Uh, scientists traditionally divide the kingdom animalia, also termed metazoa, into two main branches or sub kingdoms the sub kingdom parazoa and the sub kingdom eumetazoa. They are classified into two sub kingdoms the sub kingdom parazoa and the sub kingdom eumetazoa. Now, I want to look at the uh, Sub kingdom Parazoa. Parazoa, which means near animals, comprises animals that, for the most part, lack definite symmetry and lack tissues. Organisms that lack definite symmetry and lack tissues are classified into the sub kingdom Parazoa. They are the sponges and they belong to the phylum Porifera. Then we have organisms in the sub kingdom Eumetazoa. Eumetazoa basically means true animals. Eumetazoa basically means true animals. Okay, as if the Eumetazoa is a major division of animal kingdom that comprises all animals other than the sponges, all other animals other than the sponges, which belong to the sub kingdom Parazoa, because they lack specialized tissues. So apart from the sponges, every other animal belongs to the sub-kingdom as well. They are multicellular animals with definite shape and symmetry. They have definite shape and symmetry. All of them have all have specialized tissues and most have organs and organ systems. All of them have specialized tissues and most of them have organs and organ tissues, unlike the sponges that lack them. Members of the animal kingdom are divided into more than 30 phyla. Some of the phyla in the animal kingdom include phylum porifera, which has sponges, the phylum daria, phylum or cementurator, that's made up of the jellyfish, and hydra, and corals, and phylum tenifora, which has the common jellies, the phylum plant hermitus, which have the tapeworms, liver fruits, and planaria. Then we also have the phylum rotifera, which has the rotifera, the phylum acanthocephala, which has 
hydrocephalans, the phylum nematoda, which have the ramworms, the phylum mollusca, which those are made up of snails, plants, and squids, and octopuses, and many others. The phylum analida has the earthworms, leeches, polychies, the phylum atropoda, consists of the insects, the spiders, the crustaceans, the centipedes, the phylum, the kind of the matter consists of the sea stars, the sea urchins, the sand dollars, the sea cucumbers, and many others. The phylum codata has the tunicates, the lamsters, the fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Now here's a figure that, uh, that helps us to appreciate the various criteria for classification and the various phyla of, of this section. Plantatives here. Now, uh, animals are characterized by multicellularity. They are multicellular. Now, the multicellular organisms that lack tissues are classified into the uh, the kind of the phylum Polyphera. Then, the ones that have tissues are classified. Uh, the ones that have tissues and are radially symmetrical are they not they belong to the uh, phyla, nederia, and tenophora, they have radial symmetry. Then those that have bilateral symmetry belong to the group of animals that are called bilateria. Okay, so they are bilateral, and they have bilateral symmetry. The ones that do not have body cavity, no coelom, they are the flat helminths, the flat forms. Then the ones that have body cavity, we have the ones that have false body cavity that are called the pseudocelomates. The pseudocelomates are the nematodes, the phylum nematoda, and the rotifers, the phylum rotifera. Then the ones that have body cavity are the uh, body cavity are now classified into the uh, phylum mollusca. Now the ones that have body cavity are classified into protostomes and the deuterostomes. So we have Protostomia. Protostomes are organisms in which, during their embryonic development, the mouth forms before the anus. Okay, the mouth forms before the anus. So the protostomes, the protostomes are in, uh, organisms in the phylum Mollusca and Alida and Arthropoda, while the deuterostomes are classified into the Lophophoreta, the Echinodermata, and the Chordata. Okay, so we have the, the terostomia and we have the protostomia. All of these belong to the protostomia. Then we have the segmented species, the segmented organisms, and the phylum analida and arthropoda. Then we have the silomates, which consist of the models, analids, atropods, the phosphorates, echinoderms, and chordates. Then we have the bilateria, those that are bilaterally symmetrical, belonging to this phylum, phylum that cavities to record it, then we have the radiata, those that have radial symmetry, symmetry, then we have the paras who are those that do not have tissues. So these are various features that are used for the classification of organisms, of, of animals. Thank you very much for watching this video. I would want to still urge you to watch more of my videos on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe and also click on the notification button, the bell so that you can always be notified when there are new releases. Thank you very much for watching.